On tracks and hope I work to save them. I guess it's hard to get props when you know you lesser. So we right on your heels. I hope you feel the pressure. Rappers taking a roll, my shoes will never fit them. Before you come at a king, I let my soldiers get them. I'm from Philly with hot quarters, they turn chilly. Tight shirts with tight jeans, they never feel me. Young boys confused, they think I'm too preach. Welcome to this segment of Feeling on the Rise. As you know, I'm your host, Michael W. Pleasant. We're actually in our downtown. Philadelphia Studios is joined by my man Kevin D. Benton. Yes. Welcome to Philly on the Rise. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, man. Uh, it's good to have you here, man. We've been trying to get this scheduled and it's finally here. So I'm glad you're able to, you know, come together and join us on Philly on the Rise. Right. Uh, you are an actor yes. with over 50 credits. Yes. 50 credits to your name. Mm -hmm. And no, obviously with 50 different films you've done, there's had to have been some crazy wild scene that you were a part of. Ooh, so give were, us that. Yeah, we're there were a lot of crazy scenes I've been a part of. Now, is this something that we can speak? Oh, yeah, we're definitely talking about it. Okay. Um, I was filming a web series called London, uh, directed by the super talent Derek Hannon, and um, I played a drug fiend. And so it was kind of like a death scene where I had to kind of overdose on drugs. And so, um, of course, we didn't use you know, real drugs, of course, we kind of use like, I guess with like these Tic Tacs or what have you. Okay. And um, I had to make it believable, you know what I mean? And so I did a little research on it to kind of give me a feel for, you know, uh, what's it like and things like that. But the scene was they had to actually drop the candy on the floor and I had to eat it off the floor. Oh. So some of the things that we do in, in the name of art. In the name uh, of art. Our breath smelled good. Okay. Because okay. it was mint. But I thought that that was crazy, and of course you know you got to do one angle, then you got to do another angle. So it was like you know we had yeah, to keep going. This thing on the yeah. floor. So Did you see them sweep the floor first, and they had to clean it? They got mopping. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Was that a door working around the house, and you were eating? Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know it was kind of nasty, but it was kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, you mentioned something about research, and yes. as an actor, you need to get into character. Yeah. So how do you get into character? Is it just basically research? Uh, how do you do? It? Um, well, there's many ways that you can get into character. Research is definitely one of the ways. Um, I think, well, I think one of the things that you want to do when you do research is you don't want to, you want to emulate but not copycat. So you can maybe research another actor, you can research actual people, but one of the ways that you can get in character is just try to imagine yourself, how would you think, feel, and behave if you were in that actual situation? You know, that's one of the things that kind of help you get into character or uh, what is your what is your thinking as you're going into that scene? So if I have to say if I have to do a crying scene, what is my thinking? So I want to be thinking about sad thoughts, you know, to kind of help bring out that emotion. Um, but the key is that for for all of us as actors, you want to be the best believable you. The best believable you. Yes. You've been acting three, two, uh, about two and a half two years and a half professionally. Years professionally, um, I actually started. I got into acting, you know, with the school uh, grade school plays. Really, really liked it a lot. Uh, got away from it to get into basketball. You know, I started getting taller, started getting pretty good, trying to follow in the steps of my brother, uh, David Benton. And um, as I got older, I had family down in Tampa. And so I would go down to the uh, Universal Studios and things like that. And I got involved in the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular. I got cast as an extra and just loved it. Got upgraded to what they call Jack's Dying Scene, where this guy, he said, look, you've been upgraded. We're going to shoot you. You just got to pretend like you're dying. And I like love the reaction. Um, I did the Backlock Tour where I got cast as the Sea Captain. Um, and I also did the Disaster Movie where I got cast as the Evil Lab Worker. So during the summers, I'm kind of dibbling, that, dibbling in and out of it. And um, my experience that made me say, this is what I want to do was when um, I got cast to be a fight fan in the movie Creed. Ah. Yes, I was in the second fight scene. It was just awesome from start to finish. And did you actually get some on screen? I was a visible fight fan. Okay. So that was great. All right. Yeah, I was a visible <laughs> fight fan. And it was just awesome uh, from the time we entered the set uh, to see Michael B. Jordan come out, 
Uh, they're kind of choreographing this fight scene, and it was amazing that they had to do this for two rounds. You know, you got to know when to turn your head, when to, you know, tuck your rib. And, and there were times when they were actually hitting one another. And then, of course, Sylvester Stallone comes out. Everybody starts yelling, Rocky, Rocky. I had so much fun. I lost my voice. I met so many great people on set. And after that night was over, I actually got depressed because it was over. And I said, you know what? This is what I want to do. And from that point on, I started running. And the rest is history. The rest is history. What's interesting, you, you mentioned you started to grind. Yeah. You actually approach acting as a business. Yes. So tell us, what are your tricks of the trade? Thank you for your credits. How did you find so much work? Uh, because yeah. some people think yeah. that you have to go to Hollywood, you yes. have to go to New York. How did you find so much work? In well, you first of all, you have to, uh, like I said, approach your craft like a profession. You have to approach it as a business, and you have to approach it in, uh, in such a way that this is my brand. You know, this is my brand. And so, uh, just like if you was playing basketball, how you would want to work on your free throws every day, you know, you want to be able to work on your monologues every day. You want to find out where are the websites and auditions. So, you know, whether it's Facebook, word of mouth, or various different websites, you know, you want to continue to keep applying. You want to have good headshots and just continue to build your resume and just apply, apply. It's a seed, so it's a seed throwing business. Seed throwing yes, business. Yes, right. The more seeds you throw out, the probability of more coming back. And let's talk about all these seeds that you throw out because they all don't germinate. They all Absolutely. don't turn into trees. Right. Uh, so how did you happen to overcome some of those disappointments, if you will? You go into an audition, right. you throw your seed out, it doesn't grow, you're right. disappointed. How did you come? Well, I, I had to change my thinking. And my thinking was such that I want to control what I can control. So I can control my wardrobe going into the audition. I can control knowing my, my monologue. And after you've done all that you can do and done it to the best of your ability, you've given 110%, you really, really take on the mindset that the chips fall where they may and you keep moving. Whether you get it or you don't, when you can walk out of there and say that I was prepared uh, and that I did my best, that's all you can ask from yourself. But acting is a profession a profession um, that you do you do need to understand that there are going to be a lot of closed doors. There's going to be a lot of rejection. So if you have a rejection issue, this might not be the field for you. But one thing that I understood is that there are like more reasons why you don't get cast as opposed to why you do. Because you can go in there and you can do a great monologue and they might not be looking for somebody your height or you know with your complexion or with your weight. Or, you know, you, you might look like uh, somebody that the director don't care for, you know what I mean? Something like that. So you go in with the mindset, I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare, and I'm going to do what's in my control, and I'm going to walk out of there feeling good whether I get the call or not. Are you always this positive? You just yes. seem to be like a positive uh, guy, I, I, yeah. but you always this positive. I try to be positive like this. This is really who I am. I mean, so much negativity in the world and it takes a lot, too much energy to be negative. Sure. So yeah, I try to be positive. But I want other people uh, to feel that positivity as well. Oh, so. well, I'm glad I worked in the program because I'm a positive guy. I'm okay. well, okay. so, <laughs> no, 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 positive guy. energy surrounded us. <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks for joining us for this segment of Feeling on the Rise and we'll see you soon. Mr. Sixteen Bars, not real hip.